Thank you, Brenda, for the kind introduction. Uh, I'm very pleased to join you today to talk about pharmaceutical quality as a global priority. Today's pharmaceutical manufacturing landscape is global, with a majority of manufacturing taking place outside the US. In fact, nearly a third of all API manufacturing sites are in India and, in, and China. This emphasizes the importance of our event today and why we need to work together on an international level to improve the quality and avail availability of pharmaceuticals for patients. We define pharmaceutical quality as assuring every dose is safe and effective, free of contamination and free of defects. But pharmaceutical quality doesn't stop at the time of approval. It is what assures that drugs on the market are safe and effective throughout their life cycle. And quality is not independent of safety and efficacy. In fact, it is their foundation. So a global commitment to quality benefits everyone and expands patient access without sacrificing the quality of the product. If quality is not emphasized by manufacturers, we know that big problems can arise. Not just warning letters and recalls, but real impact to patients. So when quality goes wrong, everything can go wrong. Quality issues can lead to a number of consequences. One of the ways they can impact patients is by creating drug shortages. And in fact, we know that 60% of new drug shortages are due to quality issues with either the manufacturing process or the product. Examples of shortages due to quality issues include the recent shortage of uh, anagranulide hydrochloride capsules for patients with thrombocytemia due to uh, GCMP issues. We also had a recent shortage of erwinase for patients with acute lymphoblastic leukemia due to foreign particles in the product. Recalls present another serious quality issue. For instance, the recent recalls due to nitrosamine impurities in, in some drug products have presented challenges for all stakeholders, from patients to manufacturers to regulators. And finally, quality issues risk eroding the confidence of patients and healthcare providers in the quality of their medicines. Of course, not all events affecting quality can be predictable, such as the current COVID-19 pandemic, which continues to present manufacturers and regulators with unprecedented global challenges. Increasingly, global supply chains create many interdependencies, and at the time of the pandemic, we are realizing how those interdependencies can create problems. They can limit flexibility in production scale-up and distribution. We can be impacted by disruption to transport system or decrease air cargo capacity, as we have seen in the past few months. Absenteeism in plants, as well as stay-home stay orders or social distancing requirements can impact manufacturing capacity and capabilities. And last but not least, international regulatory convergence is insufficient at a time when manufacturers need maximum agility to rapidly implement post-approval changes. CEDAR has a number of tools related to regulating quality. Let's start with inspections. Our inspection requirements for facilities are designed to prevent problems from occurring or to investigate, investigate problems when they arise. But inspections are just one way we assure quality. You will hear about these tools today, but I would like to focus on our, a few of these tools. For every application, 
we do a quality assessment in which our experts thoroughly assess a drug, its manufacturing process, and facilities before approving it. To conduct a manufacturing assessment remotely without inspection, we rely on other tools that you will hear about today. Our quality program doesn't end at approval. We have active surveillance and enforcement programs to track marketed products and the facilities that manufacture them. We also have multidisciplinary intramural and extramural testing and research program to test products on the market and stay ahead of technology developments that impact product quality. We develop policies that support not only our quality assessment, but also global harmonizations of the practice of regulating quality. And last but not least, we also have outreach and engagement programs to communicate directly with manufacturers and the public and to explain our quality program, part of which we're doing here today. Another part of engagement is working with regulatory counterparts around the world. Global quality is a partnership with many components, including regulators and industry. Two recent examples of our drive towards international harmonizations are ICH Q12 and Q13. ICH Q12 harmonizes the management of post-approval changes across global regulators. ICH Q13 enables the harmonizations of a scientific and regulatory framework across regulators to encourage the adoption of advanced manufacturing technologies, such as continuous manufacturing. It is necessary to further the push for global regulatory convergence, particularly um, as we uh, realize the challenges of uh, uh, the current pandemic. There certainly has not been a bigger global public health challenge than the COVID-19 pandemic. Some of the lessons we have learned, it is important to help us clearly understand the need for manufacturing and supply chain changes. We need your help to prioritize our work appropriately to enable new treatments and meet new demand. It is important for us to ensure companies manufacturing drugs to address the COVID-19 pandemic can quickly register and list products with FDA. And in fact, from January to June 2020, we have had 257 newly registered facilities for prescription drug products. Although nothing can truly replace an on-site inspection, we have learned how to use alternative tools to inspections. These include requesting that firms provide records in lieu of inspection, as we are uh, uh, allowed uh, by our, our authorities under the uh, Food and Drug and Cosmetics Act. We have also relied on our partner health authorities through the mutual rec the recognition agreement between FDA and the EU countries. We have used information from inspections conducted within each other's borders and have even discussed how to expand this program. FDA does not conduct virtual drug inspections as inspections inherently include on-site activities as defined under the Food and, Cos Food and Drug and Cosmetics Act. Still, we're using all tools at our disposal to conduct remote assessments of drug manufacturing facilities. We intend to resume inspections as soon as possible on a region by region, country by country basis. Um, and I'm referring to surveillance inspections. We have continued to conduct forecast inspections and pre-approval inspections um, in, uh, in order of priority. And obviously, as uh, um, uh, we are able to do so, given uh, uh, travel and quarantine constraints. In moving forward, there are some crucial needs to continue to assure quality and availab availability of medicines. The first is shoring up the, the integrity of supply chains and building true redundancy into manufacturing platforms 
to reduce the potential for disruptions. And, and I'm referring also to the importance of geographic redundancy. The second is the need for more, for mature, for more mature quality management systems to not only maintain existing quality, but also to improve future quality. And you will hear more from Dr. Kopchka about, about this in a few minutes. The third is continuing to make sure that we, that we seek global regulatory convergence on quality issues and how we regulate quality. As our regulatory oversight becomes more sophisticated, we need to make sure that we seek international harmonization on quality standards and we need to further our reliance on the mutual recognition agreement and other agreements with trusted regulatory partners. Finally, we all need to be partners. Quality is a global partnership with many stakeholders. But though it is a partnership, at the end of the day, we at, at FDA, what you want, so we are the ones responsible for assuring that US patients have access to safe, effective, and quality medicines. So in conclusion, no one can do this alone. Let's work together to heighten global pharmaceutical quality to improve the lives of patients. Thank you for your attention.